Two seconds. Yeah. In the tunnel. Yeah. In the tunnel. Oh, oh baby, go. Get out of here. Oh, we tore it. Dang it. Tore the chute? Yep. yep. Big, the chute. big rip. Okay, that's what we need to see. Burn out, burn out, burn out. Nice job, girl. That was both stages, right? Yep. Yeah. One, one burn out. Woo! Woo! Yeah! 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 So we expect that as we go forward in our missions, as it's always been the case, we've gone to larger and larger vehicles. The Sojourner rover was a small microwave, microwave oven sized rover, you know, about 11 kilograms. Then we went to the Mars Exploration rover, was 180 kilograms. Uh, now we have the Curiosity rover, which is 900 kilograms. So they keep on getting larger as we go towards Mars sample return and other missions in the future, especially if we want to land humans on Mars someday. We get to much, much, much larger payloads and we'll need much larger decelerators to slow them down. 
So the hard things we have to do on the project are to develop the technologies and to test them. We're developing two supersonic inflatable decelerators and one very large parachute. We have to get them to condition to test them. It's actually, that's the hardest part of the project, is to get them to the dynamic pressures they need, to get them to the, uh, to the mock supersonic speeds they need, get them to the altitudes they need to get for the supersonic test in order to simulate the conditions that they're going to see at Mars. We're making great progress on developing the articles, the parachute, the two SIADs. As you saw, we've, we have our test architecture in place for testing the strength of the parachute. The big thing is to get the vehicle together for doing our test in June of 2014, where we're going to take it up to altitude, do the supersonic flight. That's the most difficult thing, and that's actually the first flight is a shakeout flight to see if we actually got it to work right and got that architecture working. And then we have three more flights to really test the parachutes and the SIADs at the conditions that we expect them to see at Mars. So what we're really doing, right, is engineering the new entry, descent, and landing technologies for the future. What we've used to date, um, it was really developed back in the 1960s and the 1970s and was used in the Viking landing back in the mid-70s as, as the first time that we landed on Mars. We, can only, we, we have utilized as best we can what we learned from those entry, descent, and landing techniques. And now we need to go above and beyond that. And that's why we got to invest in these technologies today. If we're going to get to Mars, and we are, then we need to be able to figure out how to fly through that atmosphere. So when Curiosity landed on Mars, that was a metric ton. It's a, about the size of a Mini Cooper uh, a car. And that is the most mass we can put on the surface of Mars today. That is tricking out every technique we have in entry, descent, and landing to get to Mars, a metric ton. If we're going to really explore Mars in any earnest way, with bigger and better systems, with humans and cargoes, by some studies, we need something on the order of a two-story house to be able to land on Mars. Well, when we develop technology, uh, failure in our testing, failure in our work is always a possibility. Uh, in fact, some would argue in technology development that uh, if you don't push the boundary a little bit, that uh, again, the appropriate, appropriate amount of failure is, is actually something you need in the program, right? In fact, risk intolerance is actually a guarantee of failure. You will never learn. So we have to take the right amount of risk. We do the right calculations, we do good engineering, but we are pushing the boundaries of these technologies. If we want to land bigger things, bigger, more capable rovers that can drive further, and we want to land them at altitudes that we haven't been able to reach before, to explore new regions of Mars, and we want to be able to land them more accurately so we can focus some of the exploration, we need new technologies to do that. And it's not just for the science that we have, but also for the long-term vision of eventually being able to put humans and people on the surface of Mars. So we're developing new technologies to what we call inflatable aerodynamic decelerators, or supersonic inflatable aerodynamic decelerators, SIADs for short. Uh, these are devices that are deployed at around 4,000 miles an hour uh, to increase the size of the aeroshell as it enters Mars' atmosphere. We're also developing a new parachute that would be used at Mars, a much bigger parachute that would produce two and a half times the drag of any parachute used previously on Mars at conditions um, much higher, much more difficult than previously would have been attainable. So what we're going to do is take this aeroshell, we're going to hoist it to an altitude using a very large balloon that's the size of the Rose Bowl. Uh, the balloon will carry this to about 120,000 feet. It will release this test vehicle. The test vehicle will have a, a large solid rocket attached to it that will accelerate it to 4,000 miles an hour and a little bit higher in altitude so that we get that environment, that test condition that would be very similar to how the devices would be used at Mars. And it's in that environment and in that state that we begin deploying these devices. And it's the testing of the devices that gives us confidence that we'll be able to work at Mars and that they'll perform the way that we expect them to perform.